Good morning everybody. Before we begin, let's bow our heads before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for this time. We thank you for your word. We pray that you will guide us by your Holy Spirit as we read it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm going to read from verse 9. Isaiah 40, verse 9. O Zion that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall great, gently lead those that are young, with young, sorry. Who hath measured the waters? Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and melted, meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in measure and weight the mountains in scale? and the hills in a balance, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counsellor, hath taught him. With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and who taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the skies as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burning, burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are as counted to him as less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwelleth in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth and he shall also bow upon them, blow upon them. And they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things that bringeth out by the bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. May God bless his word. Now I want to talk today about a simple thing, but an important thing. And I've called this message, Just Imagine. Just Imagine. It's my belief that the Christian of today, in general, has a very small idea or view of Almighty God. A terrible thing has happened to the church over the last generation or so. The imagination of the believer has been stunted. God, when he made man, gave him a wonderful gift. 
God gave man an imagination, the power to think and imagine great things. And it's an attribute of our Creator, the wonderful ability allowed our Creator to plan and form everything in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and under the sea, in the air and throughout the whole universe. And it's this ability to imagine great things gifted by our Creator which has allowed mankind to both plan and do some remarkable things throughout history. But unfortunately also since the fall some terrible things. The ability to imagine has allowed man throughout scripture to believe God for great things. Gideon, the lowest of the low in his family, believed God to be able to use him through an impossible situation to save his people. Abraham had the belief and the imagination to believe God, to foresee a land that he knew not and that God could take him to that land and that his, his offspring would be as the stars of heaven. Moses had the belief and imagination to believe and to follow the word of a God that he had never seen to bring about the deliverance of between one and two possibly more million people through the wilderness and into the promised land and how God could feed them and nurture them and keep them through that wilderness. David the shepherd boy had the belief and imagination to see after being anointed as a youth to be king to wait patiently and to allow God to bring him through many, many situations and circumstances to bring that about and had the imagination to, to believe God for a great nation, Israel. You know, we could go on and name countless men and women throughout history, throughout scripture, who've imagined great things for God, who believed that God was greater than anything we could possibly imagine. This imagination is the ability to see how great, how powerful, how holy, how pure, how wise and how righteous and merciful our God is. And how blessed we are that he cares for us. He sent his own son to pay the price that we could never pay. What a mighty God we serve. And this is what to a great extent the church has lost today. The God of today believes small things. Only as much as we can see or only as much as we think we can do. Only as much as what the world tells us we can do. But our God is bigger than that. Our God is an awesome God. Our God holds this world in the palm of his hand. We measure by God by what we can get out of him most times. What we can see before us. But this is not how we should see our God. Our God is great and mighty God. All knowing, all powerful all seeing the only true and wise God praise his name and all power and authority all power and all authority and glory and honor belong to him it's my heartfelt wish brothers and sisters in this short message to encourage you to encourage you the listener to allow your imagination to be fired into life once again, to believe great things for God, to allow your imagination to soar as an eagle, 
Let's look at one or two of the scriptures that tell of the magnitude and glory of our God. The one true and living God. We only have to look right at the beginning of the Bible. Genesis 1, chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What more could we possibly need to fire our imagination than that? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What a fantastic scripture. We could really stop there because it sums it all up, doesn't it? But let's read something else. Let's look at Psalm 148. 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them for ever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, you dragons and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and vapour, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. The people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. He made creation. He parted the Red Sea so that his people could cross on dry land. He parted the River Jordan so they could do it again. He formed a nation from one man, Abram. One man from Chaldea, a Gentile. And that nation exists to this very day. He came himself in the form of a man, to achieve what no other man could do, to satisfy the wrath of God upon a wicked, wicked mankind, a wicked world. Fallen man, Jesus, in his vicarious sacrifice for us on that cross at Calvary, satisfied the wrath of Almighty God so that we through faith in that finished work at Calvary can be saved and come into fellowship once again Wow if that doesn't fire your imagination I don't know what will he's prepared a kingdom and a home for those who will both believe and endure in this life endure through whatever may come because God is bigger than whatever may come and he has promised eternal life to all those who will this brothers and sisters is an awesome God this is not some small mediocre God this is almighty God he has made a covenant sealed and confirmed by his own holy name that if he should fall if he should fail in whatever he has promised he forfeits his own existence and if that should happen everything that now exists would cease to exist because it's he that holds all things together that covenant that was made with Abraham and through him through the rest of us in Genesis 15 8 to 21 where Abraham laid out those animals and that burning fiery furnace passed between them God sealed that covenant 
with Abraham and with those who would believe by his own name. And who is it that holds all things together? Let's turn, if you will, to something in the New Testament. Colossians. Turn with me to the book, the letter to the Colossians. Colossians 1, starting from verse 15. Colossians 1, verse 15. And I'll read to verse 23. Colossians 1 15 who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things that means all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, underline that, all things, he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things, again, all things, unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth, or things in heaven and you were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I poor and made a minister. Jesus holds all these things together. What a great God we serve. This is the God whom we serve, saints, brothers and sisters. He is bigger, more powerful, holy and wise than you could possibly imagine. He knows the hairs on your head. Nothing absolutely nothing is too hard for him what he has promised he will do and he dares you to imagine great things for himself he's greater than any situation or circumstance that you may find yourself in if you're in trouble right now if you're sick right now if you've got problems at work right now if you've got problems with neighbours or family or circumstances at work. He is bigger than those problems. Believe him for a way through those things and he will lead you through. God wants you to imagine great things. He really does, saints. He wants you to imagine great things. Use that wonderful imagination that he has given you which is a, an attribute of his own character. Believe him in your situation or your circumstances today. Because God is training you and strengthening you through them so that you can face whatever may be ahead for you and for me. I want you to look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Gospel of John chapter 11 and verse 40 for a moment. John chapter 11 verse 40. This is at the raising of Lazarus as I'm sure you will know. And Jesus speaking here to Martha says to her in verse 40, Jesus said to her, said I not to you that if thou would believe thou should see the glory of God. Only believe and you will see the glory of God. That's a promise from Jesus himself. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. Who
Peter, the Apostle Paul, had a very big problem. God had given him this thorn in the flesh, whatever that may have been. And he'd asked God, sought God three times to take this thorn away, this whatever it was that was troubling him. And what was God's answer? 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 And he, that is God, said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. How could he do that? How could Paul say such things? Because, Cor because Paul had a big God. And you, my brother, you, my sister, also have a big God that is above and beyond any circumstance or situation that you can find yourself in. Don't think small. Think big because God is a great and mighty God. Is your, imagine, is your imagination today only as big as you were influenced by the world around you? What do I mean by that? Is your imagination only as big as your favourite preacher, your favourite singer, your job, your finances, the situation that you find yourself in? Do you find it difficult to see a way out of any circumstance or problem that you may be in? What God is saying to you today through not just this word but through his word and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on that cross of Calvary he is saying to you that I am bigger not me John Jones but he the Lord God Almighty Yahweh he is bigger than anything you can imagine so imagine that greatness believe for that greatness believe that he knows all things and he knows what you need he knows what you can stand if it's quiet right now it's because he knows that you are strong enough to handle it if it's if he's quiet right now it's because he is trying to teach you something through it but believe that he is greater than that problem believe that he is greater than that situation because he is if you have been struggling because of a, a limited vision of God put it behind you today see that great God who created the heavens the universe that is all around in which the earth hangs like a jewel the same God who created the earth and everything within it the wonders of nature all around you who keeps the seasons and the tides in their constancy this is the God whom we serve he has no limits he is a great God and he cares for you. Believe him today and know his blessing. God bless you and keep you.